Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So this is going to be a continuation of, well, pretty much nerding out about these lapidary saw blades. So this is a uh, kind of our part three of this, uh, <laughs> this growing video series on uh, saw blades. So uh, in the first video, I uh, showed you a proven technique for sharpening those things using this right here, a mill bastard file. And then in the subsequent video, we tested out some other techniques that people have mentioned, like cutting the red brick and cutting a piece of obsidian to expose more diamond on your saw blade. I highly suggest you go watch those videos. I'll put cards up above and links down below. Go check those out. So uh, I will do a quick uh, summary real quick. Um, essentially, uh, you can sharpen a notched or centered lapidary saw blade with a bastard file. This guy right here, mill bastard file. Um, very affordable tool, uh, doesn't destroy the file, and it can make your blades last a very, very long time. Uh, I proved that this worked both with uh, photos on the microscope and, and all, all, all the things, okay? I also showed in the video following that, that cutting a red brick to uh, redress your uh, lapidary blades does effectively nothing. Same thing with the obsidian. Well, uh, today we are testing two more things, okay? We are testing a silicon carbide dressing stick and an aluminum oxide dressing stick. We're gonna head over to the bench and talk about these things. We're gonna talk about the anatomy of saw blades, just a little bit, a little bit of a refresher, and uh, we'll start cutting. The blade that we'll be using today is this one right here. Um, you can see that I have marked out on this with a Sharpie. And uh, that has helped me find the exact place on the blade using the microscope over and over again so that we're looking at the same spot and it continues all the way around. So uh, this is what that looks like under the microscope. Now we're only going to be looking at the primary edge here. Okay, so the, the part that would be uh, coming into contact with the rock. We will not be looking at the sides in that. Um, it's not not worth uh, the time the time uh, for the most part. Uh, so for those of you who are not aware of how centered blades work, um, I have a little diagram here. So the red is the core of the blade and then the centered which has the diamonds is essentially that part with all the little green dots. If you're to look at it in this orientation, you see that the core runs all the way through the red with uh, diamonds on both sides. So um, the theory here is that cutting a piece of aluminum oxide, this is a 60 grit aluminum oxide dressing block that uh, is sold by a number of manufacturers to clean up, hone, dress, whatever words they want to use, but effectively it means to expose more diamond because what will happen is when you have a saw blade, and if you push a rock into it with too much pressure, the metal that holds the diamonds in place will start to mush over the diamonds, hiding the diamonds. And without diamonds, what are you, your, your, <laughs> your ability to cut is reduced. We need exposed diamonds. So will these things expose the diamonds? The proof is in the microscope. Next up, after that, we will have a silicon carbide dressing stick. Um, now, my uh, theory here is that the aluminum oxide will do effectively nothing. This is a 60 grit, and uh, I'm not exactly sure what this is, uh, but silicon carbide used for dressing grinding wheels. Now, um, my theory is the aluminum oxide is not going to do a whole heck of a lot, um, and the silicon carbide might actually do too much. Now. With these dressing sticks, there are ups and downs, um, and maybe we'll, we'll address the ups and downs of these, the pros and cons, when we're done with our test. But, um, so, I want to see how much of the centered portion gets removed. So I've taken a measurement, and we're going to be doing before and after measurements. So, the distance, right, here to here, you know, um, comes out at zero point. 382 inches so we can measure at that line over and over again and see how much of the blade if any we really 
got rid of, threw out, whatever. So, all right, let's cut some aluminum oxide. The saw that I'm gonna be using is the seven inch trim saw from High Tech Diamond. I'm going to be running it at 3,250 RPM. The cut that I will be making into the block will not extend beyond the portion, the centered portion of the blade so that we can have some repeatability between the two. And I'm basically gonna cut in, pull it out, and then we'll take some measurements. There's the cut that I made in that. So I took some measurements and you can see here that we did take a little bit off of the blade. So it did do something. And you can see we uh, are now missing a little bit of the Sharpie that was on the, the leading edge here. Well, let's uh, head up and look at this under the microscope. So here we have that before image of just the blade as is with the mark from the Sharpie. And you can see all of the individual diamonds. And this is what it looks like after I cut it. Uh, you can still see uh, right here, we still have some of that Sharpie that was kind of wrapping around the edge, but effectively uh, it looks almost identical, right? Uh, everything is pretty much in the same place. If anything, it maybe just polished a little bit of the metal. And if we look at them side by side, Right here, you can see the Sharpie and how that kind of lines up along with a number of the diamonds exactly in the same place. I would say that uh, the, the top does have a little bit more of a shine to it, um, but all of the diamonds, we basically have the exact same exposure, okay? Really no difference uh, whatsoever that I can see with my microscope. So I remarked on the blade with the Sharpie so we can go back to that exact same point. I'm gonna run it the exact same way, 3,250 RPM. I'm not gonna extend my cut beyond the depth here and uh, go in, pull it out, take some measurements. There's the cut on that. Uh, I definitely felt it as I was cutting and it probably won't show up on uh, camera, but uh, there were some actually some sparks being thrown. So let's uh, see what happened. So here's the measurements for the silicon carbide of what I took off. Pretty much uh, double what the aluminum oxide took off. So we should see a little bit more of a noticeable difference when we take this over to the microscope. You can see that there's still the Sharpie on both sides here and uh, nothing up top. So there's there's that. Um, you do feel how hard it is to cut in, and I did see a little bit of sparking, but nothing too crazy. Um, but if we took off twice as much, we should be able to see if there's any real change, if there's any anything going on uh, at all. Let's head back over to the microscope. So here we have the before. And here we have the after of cutting the silicon carbide. Now, you can see a little bit of the Sharpie there uh, right in the middle, top and bottom. Well, when I first saw this, I thought maybe it didn't really do anything at all until I uh, did the side-by-side. -side. So here we have the before at the bottom and the after up top. And we can see some very clear differences here, okay? So... Uh, this diamond right here, we have more exposure. You can see how little it is here. And uh, more exposure there. We have more exposure of this diamond, right? It looks like uh, this one actually uh, got ripped out in that process. There's no longer a diamond there, just the, the void along with that one getting ripped out. Um, where else? So right here, you can see how little of a diamond is just exposed. And then up here, we have a much bigger portion of a diamond. Uh, this one is still there and then now it's gone and the same here. We ripped out a couple of diamonds and exposed a couple of diamonds. So 
uh, because of that, I feel like uh, we're not really creating what it is that we actually want here, which is more diamonds exposed so that we can have more contact between the diamond and rock. Let's head back down into the shop, kind of discuss some of the pros and cons of these things. Let's uh, let's talk about these, these things here, right? Um, this one kind of didn't do a whole lot. And being that it's aluminum oxide, I kind of had that going into going into it this definitely did a thing but it's not helpful when the means to sharpen the blade rips out diamonds and exposes new diamonds you're kind of in the same place that you started just in diamonds are now in different places right so uh downside to uh the sharpening sticks the bastard file doesn't do that right you get to upset the metal, the metal goes away and leaves maximum amount of diamonds exposed. Now this is of course operating under the assumption that more diamonds is better, which has yet to be uh, really explored in depth if more diamonds are actually better. Um, so that's a downside. Uh, this, um, you know, you use the edge of it um, and you still have it as a file. A uh, good bastard file runs anywhere from seven to 12 bucks ish. I mean, if prices change, right? Um, these things are like $16 up to $20, you know? I mean, it, it depends upon the size, the length the whatever, but th this is a item that is an, a consumable, right? So you would, in theory, cut these things up and then it's gone. Uh, the bastard file will last indefinitely. Um, the dressing sticks, they only work on centered blades. They will not work, in theory, on a notched blade. Now, uh, this is just something that I've been told. I haven't tested this because uh, what some of the manufacturers will say is that if you cut a notched blade or cut a um, dressing stick with a notched blade, you can destroy the blade. And I really, I, I pay money for these. <laughs> I don't really want to do a destruction test, you know, um, and test that theory out. So uh, if you have a notched blade, um, you're not using the sticks to begin with, only on centered um, and in theory only on uh, what would be omnidirectional blades that do not travel in only one way. Uh, there's some uh, that have uh, little ridged angles. I mean, even this blade, uh, you know, it comes with a See if you can see that with an arrow on it. Um, so uh, although it is centered and can be ran either direction, this is keep you going in the same way on your saw. So you're not reversing the blade around and the diamonds have the back support. Because if you see in the, in the videos uh, on these centered blades, the diamonds almost have like a little comet trail, right? Because you're cutting with the, with the face of the diamond leaving like a little ramp behind it of metal that holds the diamond in place. So uh, that's why you don't really want to be like flipping these guys around back, back and forth. So um, my takeaway is that maybe don't do the dressing sticks. You know, you get yourself a file, you get yourself an immovable object, a vise, a clamp or bench or something, you take your saw blade off, you peen the edge, it works on segmented blades, continuous rim, uh, centered, uh, directional, notched, You're leaving something out. <laughs> uh, it works on all of them and you can control it too. So like one thing that I've kind of played around with is you take the edge of your blade, right? You color it with a Sharpie. You now put it in your holder and as you're peening it, you can really see now where you've been. So, uh, you could always peen it a lot. You could peen it a little, but it will dramatically, dramatically extend the life of your blade. So um, I'm still recommending the bastard file over these dressing sticks. If you have something else that you would like me to test here as a means of cutting, um, cutting uh, something with the diamond blades and uh, testing out how well it works, uh, let me know. But um, you can't beat this. You can't beat this. Well, 
thank you guys so much for watching my complete video. <laughs> well, we're going to leave this one here. Um, take care. Uh, go watch the other videos. And uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, you know, I, I like making these kind of educational videos, and it's a lot of fun for me. And everybody, everybody wins. <laughs> All right, everybody. Y'all take care.